So welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia and today I am going to be teaching you one of the United States figure skating testing maneuvers. This is from our moves in the field. They're about to be renamed to skating skills tests. So currently they're moves in the field tests. Next season they'll start being the skating skills tests. So this is from the first test in both the standard track and the adult track. We are going to be learning the waltz eight. Now this maneuver, you're gonna to need to have both your right and left outside three turns. And I'll post a tutorial for those three turns, as well as your backward outside mohawks on both legs. So I will post a tutorial for those back outside mohawks as well. So you can brush up on those skills. But if you know how to do those skills, we can get started with this tutorial. Now for starters, we are gonna be on these two curling circles. If you don't have curling circles at your rink, that's just fine. You can also use this with a hockey circle. And I'll show you how that works in a moment as well. We just need something that will give us a center for reference. And I love using these curling circles because you can trace your waltz eight around them and it gives you a, a nice easy template. It is a little bit more challenging when you use the hockey circle or a line, but it definitely can be done. And that's how I did all of these tests years and years and years ago when I first took them. Okay, so you can start this on either leg. I prefer to start on my right leg and that's what I teach my students but it doesn't matter if you start on the left or the right. All right, so we are going to try to trace an even circle all the way around. So you can see here that there is a little crisscross in the middle of these curling circles. I'm gonna start right on that crisscross. And I'm gonna to try to keep that same distance away from the curling circle as I travel around. When I'm done with my first circle, I'm gonna to try to come right back to this center crisscross before I start my second circle. Keep in mind, this is a throwback from figures days where they wanted things as precise as possible. Okay, so we are gonna divide this circle approximately into thirds. The first third has our right forward outside three turn. So I'm gonna face my body towards the curling circle. Now, if your coach is teaching you a slightly different method, go with what your coach is teaching. This is how I teach my students. Okay, so my upper body is facing the circle that I'm gonna skate on. I'm gonna push onto my right forward outside edge, get those hips tucked right under, and do a three turn. And then we wanna go right back into that nice tall hip tucked under position. If you let your hips swing out on this three turn, you're gonna have trouble controlling your waltz eight. So again, I'm starting right between those two circles. My upper body is facing the red circle because that's where I'm about to go. So my left hand in front, my right hand behind me, hips tucked really strong underneath. Remember, always try to use the knees, not the hips with this kind of a thing. We're gonna push onto that right forward outside edge, get those hips under, and then we're going to turn, okay? Since we're on that curling circle, I like to turn about on the cross side, okay? So you have the, the black line that comes through here. We wanna turn right around that black line, okay? So you don't wanna to turn too early. You wanna turn around the quarter of the, uh, of the curling circle, around the black line. So we have our three turn. At the top, we're gonna to switch our feet and push to the left back outside, okay? So we finished our three turn. We go three turn. At the top, we're gonna to switch our feet. And then we're gonna drop our hands through and look over our shoulder. All right, so we start with our three turn, hips under, turn. Try to hold and stay tall. Switch to that back outside edge, drop the hips through and look over your shoulder. Now we're on the other half, the other cross line of our circle. And we're gonna do our back outside mohawk. Now, it's very important not to step into a T position or you'll make a big bubble and you're not gonna be mimicking the shape of this circle. So instead, that free leg, which is right now my right leg, take it all the way behind yourself so that when you step, you're stepping back and this allows you to stay closer to your circle, okay? So don't do your mohawk with the foot in front or you'll give a big bubble. Do your mohawk with the foot in back so that you can switch and stay right on that circle. Let me show you that with some motion. So we've switched our feet, we drop our hands through, look over the shoulder and switch.
So let's do this whole right side all together. So I'm on that right forward outside edge facing my right hip, left hand in front, right hand in back. Push, keep those hips under, tucked under as well as you can as you turn. Once you get to the top, you're gonna switch feet, drop your hand through and look over your shoulder. That nice tight mohawk, and that brings us right back to the center. Now we can repeat it on the other side. Now the cool thing about these arms, if you do them correctly, is the ending from one circle sets you up to start on the other circle. So we finished our mohawk, came around, and our right hand's in front. Well look, now I'm facing the other circle. So don't switch your hands in the middle. Let the hands from the mohawk roll right on over to the other circle. Okay, so we have push, drop those hands through, look over your shoulder. You're gonna do your mohawk and now you're gonna leave them there as you switch feet. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We have three turn, push, tuck those hips under, drop your hands, mohawk forward, leave those hands right there. Okay, so that is your complete waltz eight. The biggest mistake I see people making is swinging those hips around. Again, if you swing your hips around, I've talked about this so many times, if you swing your hips around, it throws your shoulders off. And when your shoulders are not over your feet, it's much more difficult to balance. So in those three turns and mohawks, don't let your hips get out of, out of control. You wanna keep them tucked under and use your knees as much as you can instead. This helps your weight stay nice and even over your feet. Okay, so this is knees, not hips as much as possible. So for the test, this pattern is repeated twice. So we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna go on the right foot first. So we have right forward outside three turn, check. Switch to that left back outside edge, drop your hands through and mohawk. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the left, left forward outside three turn, check. Keep those hips tucked under, switch feet, switch hands and mohawk through. Now we're gonna repeat it one more time, trying to copy our original tracing. So if you were to look at your pattern on the ice, you want your pattern to be as close as you can to right on top of the other one. So look for your three turn and turn in that same spot. Drop your hand, switch your feet, mohawk. When you finish your second pattern, you're gonna step out onto your right outside edge and do a T-stop. I know not all ranks have those curling circles. Like I said, I'm gonna show you how to do it in some other ways. We are gonna use this center circle, the hockey circle at the rink. I like the center one because it has this little dot right in the middle and that helps you see exactly where the middle is. And then it has the, the lines, but you can do this on any hockey circle. What you wanna do is figure out where your center is. So there's red circles on some of them, this little dot on some of them, and that's where you're gonna be starting your uh, waltz eight. And then we wanna to try to get to about the other edge, so the outer edge of the circle, okay? So I'm gonna to try to go about to the very, very edge of the circle with my top. And then I'm gonna do my three turn in the middle. So if I'm gonna measure between this center circle and the top, my three turns gonna be about in the middle of that space, okay? And the same with the mohawk, it's gonna be about in the middle between my dot and the edge of my circle, okay? So I have, I'm gonna go right between, and I do my three turn. I'm gonna push across the top of the circle, and then I'm gonna look for about between the edge of the circle and the center, okay? So I'm looking for, I'm measuring with my eyes the distance between the center of my waltz eight and the edge of the hockey circle. I'm gonna to try to do my three turn right in between. And then I'm gonna glide across the top of that hockey circle. I'm gonna to try to do my mohawk right between the edge of the hockey circle and the center. Now, if you don't have hockey circles, it becomes even more difficult. So we're going to use, if there's anything on your ice rink that you can create a center with, we want to use that as a center, okay? But if you don't have anything, if your ice rink is perfectly white or whatever color, you're gonna create a little X. 
okay? And that X, you can't see it very well, but I just created a little X for myself and that is the target I'm always gonna come back to, okay? Now what I can do is try to eyeball how big I want my circle and I'm gonna go out here and I can see my X and I'm gonna come right in line with that and I'm gonna create a little mark on the ice where the edge of my circle is gonna be. Now I'm going back to my X and I'm gonna try to eyeball approximately the same distance away to create the other edge of my circle, okay? So if you don't have any markings on the ice, you can still do this. So I'm coming back to my X, my center, and I can see my two marks, okay? You gotta keep those in mind, and now you're just gonna have to eyeball a circle. You're gonna do your three turn between your center mark and your edge mark. You're gonna skate across that edge mark and do your mohawk between the edge mark and here's my center X. Okay, three turn, eyeball it between the two. Skate across your edge mark and do your mohawk, getting you back to that center X. I know that's difficult for you to see and this is the hardest way of doing it, but we gotta work with what we got. So if you don't have a circle to guide yourself on, you can do it just by marking, or if you have a big marker, you can draw those on the ice and it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. All right, skaters, I hope you enjoyed this Waltz 8 tutorial. I look forward to seeing your Waltz 8s on Instagram, so make sure to tag me at Skating Coach Julia so I can see your videos. If you enjoyed this, please do give us that thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to reading all your comments in the section down below. If you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down in the corner so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.